Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In that mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Brother Henderson. Good morning, Sister Polk. Good morning, Sister Dorset. Good morning, Brother Turner. Good morning, Sister Tracy. God bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Sister Sarah, God bless you. Dion, good morning. Um, Delan Tuli, God bless you. Good morning, Mother McCall. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Shanae. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Holmes. Good morning, Tracy. God bless you. Good morning, Burnett. Good morning, Sister Andrini. God bless you. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you. Good morning, Lady Winston. God bless you and Pastor Winston. Good morning, Katina. God bless you and Minister Page. Good morning, Dr. Haywood and Sister Haywood. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Winters. Good morning, Elder Garrett. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Minor. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Lewis. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Austin Carroll. God bless you. Good morning, Elder Mott and Missionary Mott. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Young. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Pastor Hargrove. God bless you and Lady Hargrove. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Jan. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Dawn. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Perkins. God bless you. Good morning, Ronza. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Riley. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Mary. God bless you. Good morning, Daphne. Good morning, Deacon Triplett. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Rodriguez. Good morning, Missionary Davis. God bless you and Deacon Davis and the family. Good morning, BJ. Good morning, Angela Davis. God bless you, my dear sister and friend. Good morning. Good morning, Mother Moorhead. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Bell. Good morning, Sister Bobbin. Good morning, Sister Pollard. God God bless you, Sister Saunders. Good morning, Sister Matthews. Good morning, Charnell Williams McNeil. God bless you. Good morning. Do God bless you, Sister Ingram. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Sister Tibbs. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Moya. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Doggett. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Hill Shepherd. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Baylor. God bless you, Deacon Briggs. God bless you, Iris. God bless you, Sister Frederick, Sister Donaldson. We'll pray Praise the Lord and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to bring to you a biblical meditation and prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see the manifestation of God through prayer. People are coming out of the hospital. People are coming through surgeries. People are being healed in their homes. God is doing amazing things 
through prayer. You know, one of my dear friends, one of my dear friends um, underwent surgery and in it they were looking for cancer. But praise God, they got the report the other day that there is no cancer. Isn't God wonderful? Hallelujah. Isn't God wonderful that he is healing? He is delivering. He is restoring strength to bodies. He's just doing what God does because we are praying. And I want to encourage everybody that's watching and listening this morning to stay prayerful. So as always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it. If you're on Facebook, you can place it right in the chat on the screen, or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can place it in the comment right on the screen, or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD, and to everybody on the conference call, and I thank God for our faithful conference call listeners, everybody on YouTube, and anybody can use our text line, and that number is 336 567 Five three five eight. Again, the text line number is 336-567-5358. Text that number, all right, your prayer requests. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them. And more importantly, we're joining our faith to your faith, believing God for what we know God is able to do. I just feel like we are on the edge, the cusp, the very threshold of a season of profound miracles. Miracles, And I just want us to believe God so we are positioned so that when God starts moving, hallelujah, we'll be in the path where God can bless us and do what we know he is able to do. I want you to join me now in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number five. And we're going to continue our study moving into chapter five. And we're going to be reading verses one through seven. Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Bible says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as if it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. I want to use as our thought, who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book? We are moving in our understanding of Revelation. Chapter 4 that we just finished yesterday describes the throne of God and the one seated on the throne of jasper and sardine. Jasper signifying his purity, sardine signifying judgment, the emerald rainbow signifying mercy. We talked about the thunder, the lightning, the voices emanated from it. The 24 elders that were seated on the throne representing the church and the priesthood of the church. The four beasts, as Revelation calls them, but they're actually living creatures. And the seven lamps before the throne, which symbolized the spirit and the completion of the spirit of God. And so the one sitting on the throne, and I want to make this distinction because we, we hear, we read about the one sitting on the throne and we're going to read about the lamb. And I want to be clear, there is only one God on the throne, but we know God was, is manifested 
as Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But these three, the Bible says in 1 John, are one. So the one sitting on the throne and the one who will take the book from the one sitting on the throne are the same. Now, in our minds, that's not possible because we sometimes attach to God the limitations, the limitations of humanity. Jesus was on the earth and he was in heaven at the same time while he was in his earthly ministry. So even though for us, we can't be two places at the same time, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, God Almighty, Jehovah from the Old Testament, Jesus Christ in the New can indeed be on the throne and take the book from the throne so that the seven seals can be delivered and manifested. Now, look at the scene here that he saw John sees in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, a book written within and on the backside. It was, and, and this just signifies that there was a lot of information in the book. It was a roll of parchment, which was what they used to write upon in those times. But it was written on the front. It was written on the back. It was a complete and a very thorough scroll. And it was sealed. The scroll was sealed. And the Bible says it was sealed sealed with seven seals. And this was very, this was a common practice in Roman times that when you wrote a will, you sealed it seven times to prevent anybody from going in and just accessing it, looking at your information, looking at what was written because it was not to be broken or opened until the death of the testator, the person that died, the person who was the object or the subject of the will. And this was just like a will. It was sealed. It was parchment. It was complete. And it was there in, and it was sealed with seven seals. There were seven different seals that held this book together to prevent just anybody from reading it, which means that it was prepared long before John saw it. Let me just say it. This book was prepared. God knows the end from the beginning. And he had prepared this book. He had prepared Revelation. He had prepared what he would reveal to John long before John ended up on Patmos because it was a complete work and it was sealed, meaning that it was not to be opened without the sheer direction and at the sheer, hallelujah, unction of God. It wasn't going to be open. It wasn't shared. It wasn't shared. In in, the, in Genesis. It wasn't shared in, through the prophet Isaiah. Daniel saw some of this. Ezekiel saw some of this. But the complete unveiling or the complete revelation, and remember we're studying what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is more than just simply a, 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 a book or, or, or a letter concerning the end times. This is the revealing, the apocalypse of the Lord Jesus Christ so that we would understand more about Jesus than we have ever known. And that's why we have to dig in this text and unravel and unpack because it's important that we know what the Lord is trying to say to us. And so the, the, the he, he's holding the book in his right hand, holding the book that's sealed with seven seals, the parchment, and an angel, probably Gabriel, proclaims with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Who ha who, who is worthy? Who is righteous enough? Who is holy enough? Who is godly enough? Who has paid enough that he is worthy to open this book and to open the seals and to loose the seals? And then the Bible says, no man in heaven. Remember, um, John was standing in heaven and nobody in heaven stepped up to say, I'll open the book. Nobody in the earth stepped up and proclaimed, I can open the book. Nobody under the earth, meaning nobody in hell, could step up and say, I'm worthy to open the book. Nobody in earth, heaven, or hell was found worthy to open the book or to look thereof, thereupon. Now, John started crying because here he is seeing heaven. Here he is seeing what is to come, and yet the greater mysteries have not been unfolded, have not been unpacked, and it doesn't seem as if there's anybody there that can step up and proclaim and open the book and share what is in the book and to unravel the seals. So John starts crying because no one was found worthy to open and read the book or either to look upon the book, and one of the elders, of, once again, of the church, 24 elders represent the priesthood of the church. One of the elders saith unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion 
of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. John, don't cry because in the midst, there's the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So the only one worthy to open the book is Jesus Christ himself. The only one worthy to open and to un, uh, uh, to, to, to loose and to reveal the revelation of Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. I need y'all to get this. The only one worthy to reveal Jesus to the world, to the nations, to the generations is Jesus Christ himself. He's the only one worthy. He's the only one that can proclaim himself. He's the only one that can be trusted to share and to unleash the secrets and the mysteries that are in the seven seals. It was sealed. It was knotted up. You know, he Daniel saw some things. And when Daniel saw those things, you know, the Bible says in Daniel 8 and 26, he told him, seal the book. In other words, it was not Daniel's time, nor was it Daniel's full office to make full revelation. Daniel saw into the Antichrist. Daniel saw, hallelujah, the mysteries. And you have to almost study Daniel as you study Revelation. But when Daniel saw it, Daniel was told to seal the book. In other words, Daniel, it's not time. Daniel, it's not time. It's not time to reveal it. So what you see, you seal it and you hold on to it. Paul saw some things and he said there were some things that were unlawful for him to speak. In other words, it was not his time to share everything that he saw in the mysteries when he was taken up into the third heaven. And so here is here is now this revelation. Here is now this book. And the question is asked, who is worthy to open the book? And the only one worthy to open the book is Jesus Christ himself. And in this instance, he is now manifested, not as the king on the throne, but as the lamb of sacrifice. I need you to understand, God has manifested himself in more than one way. The Bible says in Hebrews, God who has sundry times and in divers manners have spoken to us now in this dispensation speaks to us by Jesus Christ. Oh God, yes, yes, yes. Jesus, has, God has always revealed himself, but now he's revealing himself as Jesus Christ. Not only the king, but the lamb of God. And he's both. He's both. He's the king and the lamb. Ashanaba. He's the king and the lamb, and he, he, he's the one found worthy, and he is the lamb. He is the lamb. Now, let's take a look at the lamb. He's the lion. He's the lamb. Look at this. And the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's the root of Jesse. All right, the root of David, and he hath prevailed to open the book. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as if it had been slain, with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. The horns represent power, the eyes represent omniscience and knowledge. He is the complete power and he is complete knowledge. That's why the number seven is there because seven is the number of completion. So seven reveals that the lamb has what? All power. Seven eyes reveals that he has all knowledge, all insight. All right. He's the one true and living God. And he's standing there in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the elders, in the midst of the living creatures. And and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. The right hand symbolizes the hand of power. So Jesus, who is God, who is sitting on the throne, hallelujah, is now manifested as the lamb. And the lamb is also the lion, the defender, the fierce beast, the protection of Judah. Oh God, this just gives us a glimpse into the multidimensional nature of God. And God has always, saints, been multifaceted. Do you know that in the Bible, in the, in the book of Genesis, it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the phrase God is Elohim. And Elohim is a plural word, not because there is more than one God, but there are so many expressions of the one God that one description, one manifestation does not fully encapsulate everything that Jesus is. But the Bible says he has given him what? The fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus Christ is the fullness. In Jesus Christ is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Redeemer, Healer, 
Savior, life giver, all of that is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Remember the title of the book. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Deacon Grant. Jesus is all in all. He's everything to the believer. He's everything to the universe. He's everything to the church. And he's the only one that is going to be found worthy to open the book and open the seals. And the lamb signifies he paid for it. He paid for it with his own blood. He paid for it with the sacrifice. That's why he's revealed as the lamb that was slain. The blood on the lamb. The broken, hallelujah, the broken flesh on the lamb. All done so that we could be redeemed. So that we could be saved. So that we could be among the four and twenty elders. All of this is who he is. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the root of David. David came from him. Hallelujah. And he springs out of the loins of David. He said before Abraham was, I am. This signifies his eternality and the fact that he has prevailed. He just didn't die. Oh God, he died a lamb, but he rose a lion. Oh God, saying all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. Yes, he died a lamb. He died as the sacrificial lamb lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, but he was resurrected with power, and the lion symbolizes the power, the lion symbolizes the authority, the lion symbolizes the godliness that not only made him the suffering servant, but made him the mighty God, and he's the only one that's worthy to open the book, to open the seals, to share what we will know. We're going to go further in this chapter, my time is up, but I'm so excited that there is one worthy that can reveal what will happen. All of this is about preparing ourselves for what will happen. And Jesus Christ wants you to know. Oh God, I got to close. Jesus Christ wants you to know what will happen. Why? So you can prepare yourself. So you can warn others to prepare themselves. So you can remain in a constant state of readiness because we just don't know when all of this is going to be manifested. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. But we just don't know when. But God wants us to know. And he wants to open the book to us so that we will understand. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. God, I thank you. I honor and I adore you for your goodness, your mercy your grace, and your love. Lord, you've been so very good to us. You kept us last night as we slept, and you awakened us today. And Lord, we awaken to new mercies. We awaken to your grace and your love and your kindness. And Lord, I thank you for being able to get up and get prepared and to be able to join this great cadre of believers, God, from all over the world, people from everywhere gathering in prayer, whether they're on the conference call or whether they're on Instagram or whether they're on Facebook or YouTube. I thank you for everybody in the morning prayer family. And I want you to bless Ishanama. Oh God, first with your presence, let us know that we are together and united by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, by the manifestation of miracle signs and wonders, the release of your power, the demonstration of your authority. God, I want you to bless somebody right now. Lord, I'm praying for everybody that's on the prayer list. Every name, oh God, that's been put in the chat. Every name sent by text or messenger or email. God, we're praying for those people now. We're praying, my God, for Ayana. We're praying for Denora. We're praying for Baron today. We're praying for Missionary Domingo's grandchildren. We're praying for Deacon Grant's children and grandchildren. We're praying for the Hooks family, for the Johnson family, for the Scott family, the Morris family. God, I'm praying for April Hood's family, her church family, and her school. I'm praying for the Bent family. I'm praying for Chris, for Bessie Drawn, for Latanya, for Pastor Walter Atkins, for Mother Lily Gatlin, for the Glory Chapel Baptist Church. We're lifting up the Crowder family today. We're praying for the Scott family, the Brown family. 
family. We're praying for Pastor and Lady Williams this morning. We're praying for Joyce T and family, God. We're praying for Shanae and family. We're praying for the Wilson and Shockness families. Every name on the prayer list, every name sent by text or messenger, God, we're holding them up and we're believing you. Lord, we're praying for the unsaved this morning. God, that you would save. Save, God. Save to the utmost. Let them hear the word. Let them be pricked in their heart. Let them come to you believing and be born of the water and of the spirit. We're praying for backsliders everywhere that you would reach out and draw them in, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're praying. We're praying, my God, for everybody. My God, that's discouraged. Oh, God, everybody that feels, oh, God, tired and weary. God, that you would strengthen them, help them, give them joy, give them power, and strengthen your body. God, I'm praying for healing today for the sick. Everybody that's sick in their bodies everywhere. God, that you would remember them. God, remember David today. Remember Miracle Destiny. Remember Missionary Domingo as she prepares for surgery. Remember Alexis Smith and Lamont Edwards today. Remember Joyce Young. Remember Jacette Harrell today. Remember Stacy Malloy. We're praying for Ann Bass Knight. We're praying for Marsha Han's daughter, her nieces, her nephew, and her friend. Lord, that you would heal. We're praying for Zoe today. We're praying for for Miss Connie today. We're praying for Jennifer, my God, and Miss Pat this morning. We're praying for Zenobia Dooley. We're praying for Angela Davis. We're praying for Elaine Nicholson. We're lifting up Mother Barbara Davis. Everybody everywhere that's sick and suffering, everybody that needs healing in their bodies, we're praying for them now. We're praying for Tony Williams today in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying for everybody everywhere. We're praying for Deacon Perry Adams. We're praying for Deacon Jerome Wilson. We're praying for Deacon Chris Harrison, for Elder Robert Toll. My God, everybody everywhere that's in sickness, God, strengthen them now. We're praying for Pastor and Lady Winston. We're praying for Bishop D. Lord, let your healing blood prevail in the name of Jesus Christ. God, remember, oh God, in your precious name, Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, remember Mother Carol Coleman. Remember, my God, Sister Shakaya Polk. We're praying today, God, for Bishop Mac Vincent, for Bishop Irving Taylor, for Bishop Alvin Palmer today, for Bishop Gregory Wilder, for Apostle Leroy Joseph, for Apostle Charles Williams, for Apostle Sylvester Norwood. Lord, remember the sick everywhere. In the name of Jesus, look on my God, Brother Wiggins. Look on Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. Look on Dr. and Sister Hayward and Dr. Hayward's mother. Look on Mother Jill, Mother Pride. We're praying for Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. We're praying for Lady Staten today. Stretch out your healing hand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, do what we know you're able to do. We're praying for Pastor Carr and Minister Carr. We're praying, my God, for Elder Tyson, Elder Smith today. God, we're lifting up. My God, and we're praying for everybody. My God, Mother Foster, Henry J. Hallelujah, Brother Cliff today. We're praying for Mother Tanaj, Mother Home, and Missionary Simmons today. God, we're lifting up, my God, Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. We're praying today that you would remember, my God, Marlette, oh God, Dennis today, Maurice, Tony, Kimberly, God, that you would remember, Lord, in their precious name, Chris, everybody that's sick, anybody watching today, Lord, touch now. Remember Deacon Grant today in the mighty name name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your healing virtue flow all over his body. Oh God, we pray that you would heal anybody watching that's in sickness today. And Lord, go to every hospital, every cancer, cancer ward, every ICU unit, dialysis unit, COVID ward, and God, bring healing. God, go into the nursing homes, the rehab centers, the rest homes, even into hospice, God, because you remain the bomb in Gilead. And Lord, touch and heal. We're praying today for grieving families everywhere. We're lifting up the Little John family. We're praying for the Witcher family. We're praying for Duchess and the Copich family. We're praying for Jan Matherin and her family. We're praying for the Kennedy family today, for Sister Dolores Moore, for Minister Harry and Sister Diane Evans today. We're praying for the Nash family, the Turns family, the Chambers family. We're lifting up the Robinson Clark family. We're praying for the Morris Carney family. We're praying for Takesha Hill and her family, for the Myers family, the Rose family. God, we know that you're 
a comfort to the grieving heart. So God, minister to these people today in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying, my God, for Lady Andrea Maxwell and her family. Oh God, we're praying today for Dr. Phyllis Carter and her family. We're praying today, my God, that you would remember, my God, Bishop Michael Fields Shekinah and the Fields Green family. God, we're praying today that you would remember, my God, hallelujah, Mother Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family, Mother Ida Harrell and the Harrell family. Look on the Groovers today. Look on the Hargroves today, God. Look on the Kramers, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember them in a special way. My God, look on them now and touch and comfort them in the name of Jesus, the Blunt family, the Hill family, everybody that's grieving. God, give them grace and comfort. Lord, remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Remember, my God, the Meadows family, the Moya family. God, look on the Perkins family. Look on the Dockery family. Look on Pam. Oh, God, her mom and her sisters. God, look on them now. Look on, oh, God, every grieving family everywhere. Lord, give them comfort today. Look on the White family, God. Look on, my God, hallelujah, Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. Look on the Ransom family today. My God, look on and comfort, my God, the Jacksons, the Ned family. God, the Greens today. God, give them the comfort of your spirit. God, I'm praying today that you would comfort, my God, Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. God, that you would look on every grieving heart everywhere. God, give them comfort and grace in the name of Jesus. My God, look on Trell and Ryan and the Allen Williams family. Look on, oh God, look on, my God, Tommy and Michelle. My God, in the Clark family. God, give comfort in the name of Jesus. Oh God, to the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeze, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, the Bankses today. God, give them comfort. The Middletons, the Taylors. God, look on, my God, the Felix family. Look on the Zapata family. Look on the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Mannix, the Boojums. In the name of Jesus, the Matherins today. Look on Pastor and Lady Manic. Look on, hallelujah, Pastor Stevens. And God, give comfort today. Look on the Davises. Look on, hallelujah, my God, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hazes, the Moors. God, give comfort and grace, God. Hallelujah to the Austins, the Adams family, the Harbison family. Every grieving widow, every grieving child, every grieving parent, every grieving loved one and sibling. God, give comfort in the name of Jesus. God, I'm praying today that you would remember the body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, all the first ladies, all the pastor's children. God, remember the mothers, the missionaries, the ministers, the deacons, the young people. God, I pray for the young people. Lord, look on musicians, singers, and psalmists, everybody in the body of Christ, and God, strengthen the church. Help the church to prepare itself. Oh, my God, as we understand what is to come, that we are ready. My God, that we are ready, Jesus. Lord, help the church to do your will. Help the church to sound the alarm. Help the church to preach the gospel throughout the world. I pray today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray today, God, that you would remember school employees and students everywhere. I pray, God, that you remember everybody that works to help another person. My God, private duty, those in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, hospice centers, clinics, banks, offices, stores. My God, construction sites, driving trucks, factories. God, just cover with your blood. So many diseases are afoot, but Lord, we're trusting you for protection and we're trusting you for healing of the sick. So Lord, touch and heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we're praying today as you heal that you would look on this troubled world, Turkey, Syria, Ukraine, Russia, the United States, all throughout the world, God, there is trouble, there's violence, there's hatred, but Lord, heal the land, heal the land from sin, heal the land, my God, from hatred, from jealousy, from violence, heal the land, my God, from injustice, from racism and sexism, and let the church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Lord, we need you now like never before. We need you more than we have ever needed you. And we pray your grace, God, to be upon us. Keep us today as we go forth. Cover us in your precious blood. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Somebody give God the glory right now. Somebody give God the glory right now. Somebody give God the glory right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is my declaration for today. Jesus, only you are worthy to open the book. Jesus, only you are worthy to open the book. John said they looked in heaven. They looked on the earth. They looked under the earth. And they couldn't find anybody worthy to open the book but the Lamb. But the Lamb. But the Lamb. But the Lamb that was slain before the very foundation of the world. Meaning he was ordained. To give himself as a sacrifice for humanity. Jesus Christ was not an afterthought. He wasn't a secondary consideration. But because he knew we would need a savior. Hallelujah. He is the lamb of God. And he is the only one worthy. To open the book and to reveal. What will happen upon this earth and in heaven. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. And if you want someone else to be blessed, share it, share it. We're trying to go literally verse by verse through the book of Revelation. I know people have always wanted to study and know about it. So share the study so others can be a part of this teaching as well in the name of and as part, a part of the prayer. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on Gregory Gospel. Dot com. Let me thank everybody who seeds and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate them. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is www.refuge.com. Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, Refuge Temple NC.com, and you can give on the donate page. You can also give through the GiveLify app. Just search for Refuge Temple Burlington. You will see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. And if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but I thank you most of all for being a part of this morning prayer family and how God is blessing all over the world because we are praying together and God is moving on our behalf. So please, my brothers, my sisters, keep telling people about prayer, keep sharing the prayer and keep inviting others to prayer. And please, please, please keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my Father, my sisters, pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Keep praying for Refuge Temple because God is blessing us. And let's pray one for another that the grace of God would keep us, sustain us, hallelujah, and bless our lives. Lord, keep me ever mindful that you are worthy and you are the only one worthy to open the book. And Lord, count me worthy to escape the judgments that are in the book. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.